Hi, right, this is Joe again with another review. <coughs> and for a sudden, this video, I'm going to be discussing a classic television show, at least one night, one of the many that I grew up with. And that's the 1980s uh, sitcom, The Facts of Life. It's the end on NBC from 1979 to 1988. It was ran for nine years. And it was one of Alan Jefferson's. And if, I feel it was like the second most successful spin off show. Uh, ever, uh, because it because it ran, ran for so long, uh, because it was the spinoff of the show Different Strokes, and of course I saw uh, Sean Ray, Lisa Welch, Nancy McKeon, uh, Mindy Cohen, uh, Ken Fields, and also a story, uh, at least in the first year, saw so Molly Ringwald and a bunch of other girls, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, like I said earlier, this was the uh, spin-off series from Different Strokes. You can follow Charlotte May's character. And Charlotte May, of course, played Mrs. Garrett, and Mrs. G, as she was affectionately called throughout in both, both series. Uh, she decided to leave her job as the housekeeper on Different Strokes to become a house mother for a group of girls in a, an all-girls uh, prep sc boarding school called Eastman. And which is, of course, was supposed to be the school that Kimberly on the different strokes, um, the Dana Plano character, is supposed to go to. But you never really see her in the show. You only saw like maybe a couple of episodes, and then while we're crossing over from different strokes, when Mrs. Gary was, was transferring her character from different strokes to Facts of Life, they only had Dana Plano show up a couple of times, and then also Gary Coleman a couple of times as well. Uh, on the show to visit Mrs. G, and then, and then that was it. They wrote, didn't have any more crossovers anymore. Uh, but it was a spin off of Different Strokes, and it was very successful at. But the problem was, in the first year, that they had a boatload of girls on, on the show. Including, like I said earlier, you had uh, Molly Ringwald in the first year, and it was before that year, of course, she became a star in the Rat Pack movies in, in the 80s. But the producers and NBC felt there were like too many girls, too many interacting storylines. So what they decided to do was to cut the cast down to four girls and Mrs. Garrett. And so, which of course eventually they did. But the problem was he didn't have a tit for tat with any of the particular characters. Like one, like two characters would go bigger back and forth, which is like the Star Trek premise between Mr. Spock and Dr. McCoy when the two of them were always bickering and sticking to each other throughout the whole three years of Star Trek plus all the yet on the, the six movies uh, on the original six movies that's what they were running for uh, effects of life and they didn't really have that so they decided to bring in a new character when they cut down the cast of those four girls where they which were because these are both Joe, Minnie Cohen, and Ken Fields. They were the original three girls that they kept, and they decided to add, add an extra or a new ca cast member for the second season, which just happens to be Nancy McKeon, who was the brother, who was, brother, I mean, the sister of Philip McKeon, who was then already starring on the television show Alice, which, already, which I previously done a review for. So check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, anyway, uh, Nancy McKeon was, her character was Joanne Palmerchuk, like a Polish girl from the, from the Bronx, and she was like, like a working class girl from working class, from blue collar working class family from the Bronx, who got a scholarship to go to Eastern. So her and Blair, actually of course they played the two oldest girls, and throughout the whole run of the series were like sticking to each other, you know, back and forth. And of course, that worked, and from the second season on, it was pretty much a hit. Uh, to, to, of course, the end of the series, uh, in 1988, it became, it became a huge hit. Of course, over the course of the, course of the series, of course, it was the first, really was the first series to have an all-girl cast. Two, you could argue, through the first year, you didn't have a main character who was a, when a man who was like the headmaster of the school. Uh, but his character was replaced by another guy, 
who was the headmaster at Eastland throughout the time they were in the girls, the four girls were in Eastland. Uh, but he would show up on the show from time to time, so, but he wasn't there every, on every single episode. Uh, so it, it became a novel show that you know, the whole cast was all girls. I mean, at that time when it was, it was eight years old when the show premiered, so of course that's why you didn't think that way. Too, of course, so I was much older. But but the but the show is still running, running on cable TV. It's thing called Logo Channel on Logo now. But it's still very popular, and even in the reruns, even though it's been almost thirty years since they had an original episode on the air. But the show is still popular and still very good. It also had a classic TV theme song. You take the good, you take the bad, you take the both, and then you have facts of life. And no, I'm not going to sing the whole song. That's why I only spoke 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 the uh, lyrics. But of course, over the course of the series, he did have brought in some controversial moments in that show. In the show, uh, one of them in particular was an episode where the secretary. Uh, the headmaster secretary was raised to the parking lot. So of course actually they were really concerned that all, because this, this was an old girls school. They were concerned that other girls would be attacked. And sure enough they had a costume party where all the girls would dress up like, as the famous celebrities. And Natalie, who was playing Mindy Cohen, was coming back to a dorm after the, after the party and she got attacked. Uh, she, she was almost, she it was an attempted rape. Uh, the reason why he wasn't, or well, the guy didn't go through with it, because other people were coming up the path and he got scared and he ran off. But now he was, was attacked and they did have the whole sequence where they did have a self-defense class and there was, and the guy, a self-defense instructor was teaching all the girls self-defense and they did have a couple of funny moments in that particular scene. But of course, the scene that really broke everybody down was the scene where Natalie came home and she was, came home to the dorm uh, and told Mrs. Gale what had happened because her, she was crying, her jacket was torn, and told Mrs. Garrett, said, Mrs. Garrett, I was almost home. And, and she just broke, you know, completely broke down. And that was pretty emotional and a powerful uh, moment in this, in this series. Of course, the show was also known for having uh, Jerry Jerry Jewel, I think his real name was, uh, who who was who was a actual stand up comedian with cerebral, uh, cerebral palsy, and they had her on the show. She did a, a few episodes. I don't know exact. I don't remember the exact number, but she did a bunch of episodes from time to time, and she played uh, Blair's cousin uh, Jerry, and she, and she kept the same name. But uh, on the same first name, and she and she was and she came on the show from time to time, and that was a groundbreaking character because the first one of the few times when you had an actual person with an actual physical disability on the show, or, or on any time in the show really, so that, so that was a, really a groundbreaking uh, moment. Of course, uh, like I said, as the shows went on, one of the most disappointing episodes I felt it, w it was a good episode, but. But in hindsight, it's also uh, disappointing a little bit uh, because since Blair and Joe were so much old, was like at least a year, old, a year or two older than now, and more than more than they were four or five years older than the two he was. Uh, they had them graduate separately because the natural other girls were at different ages and different rates, so they had Blair and Joe graduate together. And of course, like a year or two later, Natalie graduated, and then a year or so after, a couple years later, you had finally had Tui graduate from Eastland. But after when Blair and Joe graduated from Eastland, you didn't really see Eastland anymore, which I'm going to get to, which, which I'm going to get to. Uh, but they had the graduation episode, which I think was originally an hour, an, an hour show, and actually over the years it's been chopped down to two episodes. Uh, all you saw was Blair and Joe in the graduation gowns marching into the uh, auditorium, and that's it. That's all you saw. Uh, you never see him actually at the graduation ceremony. You never see that they're making a speech. The great, or I think uh, Joe, marching up at Anthony McKean, 
uh, was supposed to give the Brown Victorian speech, and then that, and then never saw it. Because all they saw that was the girls marching to the auditorium for the graduation ceremony, and that was it. Uh, so that was disappointing. But of course, to keep the show going, how are we going to do it with Blair and Joe not at the school anymore? Just now and truly were. So they came up with this premise with, with Mrs. Garrett leaving Eastland to store her own business. Quite in its edibles. So, so they had Blair and Joe help out, you know, work in the store and help out. And they had a room upstairs above the, um, the uh, store. It was like a bakery slash eatery. And they had Tooling and Allie also moving. And they also helped us. That's why they kept the premise, the premise going. And of course, we never saw Natalie or Tuli graduate either, which was, also, which was also a rip off. Uh, but then, of course, the, they, uh, there was one season when the, when the uh, business burned down and they reopened like a pop culture store. And that's when you had George Clooney come on, the, come on the show. And he did a few episodes and he was a nobody then. I think for the last year or so, he was a series regular, but he was a nobody as an actor then. And to me, now, ever since he left E.R., he's been a nobody actor. Right? Um, because he was stupid enough to leave E.R. After, I think, five years. Uh, anyway. Uh, the, the show... A after a while, I think after, like, the sixth season, uh, Charles and Ray left the show because they said, Oh, these girls don't need any house mother anymore. Because they got too old. They're all graduated from... from Eastland and Ray, they're all in college, they're all adults now. They don't need me. So, so she left, and Claudia Leachman took over. She played Charlotte, uh, Mrs. G's sister. And she stayed on for the rest of the run of the series. Of course, one of the, also one of the more uh, controversial episodes of the series was, and it was, I think, during the last season. Uh, the producers of the show wanted to make sense now they're all adults, pretty much adults. All, the, all these college age students now. They wanted to have one of the girls lose their virginity. And originally they picked Blair. Or, or Lisa Welch's character, Blair, Blair the Door, because she, you know, she was the previous one. Even though at that point, Nancy McKean was just as pretty, that's as beautiful as Lisa Welch was. But of course, Lisa Welch was, of course, more boy crazy than any of the other characters. So they figured, hey, let her lose her virginity. That her be the first girl to lose her virginity. Uh, but Lisa Wilcher was a was a Christian, practically her whole life. So she so she objected on religious grounds. I don't want to do this episode. Uh, I don't want to be the girl to do it. I don't even want to appear in the episode. So of all 203 episodes of the series, that was the only episode that Lisa Wilcher didn't appear in. Uh, so Mindy Cohen says, okay, since Lisa doesn't want to do it, I'm going to do it. So, Mindy Cohen's character, Matt now he was the one who lost to Virginia on this on the series. And that's how the whole the rest of the episode was pretty much uncomfortable for the whole cast was discussing sex. Was discussing him. Uh, oh, hey Natalie, how was it like to have sex? You know, you know, you know that type of thing. Or how was it? How did it go? Um, you know. That was pretty much the whole conversation for the rest of the episode, for the most part. Uh, I don't even remember what the last episode actually was. But because, uh, I think, uh, Mindy Cohen and, uh, and, uh, Nancy McKean stopped one, they stopped one to do the show anymore because they didn't want to do it anymore. So, so NBC decided to end the show after nine years. Um, uh, but there was also a couple of episodes of note that I want to bring up. One episode was when Natalie's father died. Um, and they had the whole thing to, and this, describing what seeing Shiva meant, meant. Uh, because of course Natalie was, was Jewish and she's of course also Jewish in real life. So they had to bring up all the traditions of being Jewish and, bring, and seeing, silver, seeing Shiva if you're Jewish. Uh, and also this one particular episode also when all, that's when all the girls were still in Eastland. When, when Tootie was obsessed with Jermaine Jackson. Really obsessed. I mean, really extremely obs uh, obsessed with Jermaine Jackson. Uh, she was the head of the Jermaine Jackson uh, fan club in Eastland. She was the, pre you know, the president of his fan club for, for, for the girls at Eastland. 
uh, she made a bust for him, uh, of him, and all that stuff. And all of a sudden, she gets a phone call from uh, the PR, Jermaine Jackson's PR guy. Says, hey, since you're the president of, of the fan club, of this branch of Jermaine Jackson's fan club, when are you come down to Madison Square Garden and see him perform? And she wanted, she wanted to go because she was like pussy invited, you know, to be there. And you know, it was just a PR stunt. You know, like, or giving like, like two tickets to go. So she was like crying, she threw a, threw a fit to go. So I went and said, and because they made a prior commitment to this hay, hay ride dance thing, they're going to have in Eastland. So, so we can't, we can't go. Even though, even though you invite or any other time, we go, no problem. But not this time. Because we can't go, the, ti the timing stinks. So, so Tuli threw a fit and said, I don't care, I'm going to go whether you say so or not. Uh, to, to Mrs. G. I don't care Mrs. G and one whether you like it or not. And she was quite blowing her like that. I said, she go. And, and then was like, I can't believe the only way we get any rain with you is if, if you feel attached to And of course, Mrs. G talked talk to the girls about hey, how it was 20 years ago. Well, almost 20 years ago when the Beatles came to, uh, you know, yeah, I remember. I think, I think they were joking, yeah, I remember something my parents were talking about, something like that. I said, yeah, but it was worse. I mean, the, only, the only time it seems like that was people were obsessed with the, with the Beatles screaming like when, when they appeared in the Ed Sullivan show or they, they had the concert, the famous concert at Shane Stadium. And he saw that in Tuli. So that's why that's why I said yes. I couldn't say no anymore. And then of course when she saw Tuli fighting on to did get into Jermaine Jackson's dressing room. And she had the president, and actually the security grabbed the president, and they dumped it in the, in the, in the sink and ru ruined ruined the uh, the bust the the twenty million of Jermaine. And of course, and then she realized, talked to Jermaine for a little bit. She, she actually does talk to Jermaine Jackson a little bit, and then and then uh, she found out, turned him out, and saw the PR guy on the phone talking to another president of Jermaine Jackson's fat club and a different branch of his fat club. So I said, hey, we're giving you two tickets for, for a concert in Philadelphia. Because since you're the president of Jermaine Jackson's Fan Club, we appreciate you. You're the president of this, this branch of Jermaine Jackson's Fan Club. We're going to give you two tickets for this concert in, in Philadelphia. Then, Tuning knew that it was all just a PR thing and not a personal invite from Jermaine Jackson himself, but well from his PR guy. And that's when she knew it was fake, and that's pretty much the end of her. Obsession with Jermaine Jackson, uh, but the, but the show, but, but there was another episode I remember where, where, Joe, where Joe wanted to get even with, with one of her teachers uh, because the teacher was like, like the edit, like the teacher for for the school paper, and Joe was one of the reporters, and the teacher was giving him her a hard time, and found out that she was that the teacher was a man. Got busted in a cocaine house in a drug den, and so I wrote a whole story about that. And then she regretted it because the teacher ended up getting fired for it. She thought it was fake, uh, and we just happened to be there in the wrong place at the wrong time. But the teacher was there to buy, and she, and the teacher felt, and Joe felt guilty about it. Uh, but the teacher was didn't admit to Joe that he was there to get drugs. He wasn't at the you know, wrong place, wrong time thing. He was there to get drugs because he was uh, addicted to cocaine. Uh, but the teacher ended up getting fired, and and, and Joe realized what what the real phrase "the power of the press" really meant. Uh, but the but the show itself was uh, there was another episode with Joe, where a teacher that she had that she loved, uh, not having a crush on or anything like that, but teacher that she really bonded with and she found out that she was leaving because she was dying of cancer and so Joe was upset that how come she never told me how come he never told me and there was also another powerful episode but most of the good episodes they had with the facts of life were when all four girls were together in Easter uh, the only episode they mentioned of note was the episode they mentioned earlier with Nally losing her virginity but other than that, there was not very little episode of note after 
Glenn and Joe graduated from Eastland. Um, the show went, to me, the show went downhill after that. But it still was the show for most part for the rest of the series. Uh, there was one episode that was good afterwards too. Uh, I don't remember if it was before or after the Virginia episode. It was an episode where Blair was so tired she fell asleep at the wheel and got, and got into a car accident. So it was one of the few, few episodes that dealt with that issue. People falling asleep at the wheel. And she had like a scar, scar on her face and she moved the, moved the bandage and so on the scar was. And I think, they, I think they, and I didn't remember they actually did show it. Uh, and that was also another powerful episode. So I just remembering all these episodes. Uh, but the, for, well, for the most part the show is damn good. It still stands out today even though it was made, started in 1979 and man I thought most of the 80s. Uh, the show is still that good. It's still that funny. And I know I mentioned just a few episodes, but those episodes went on my head, my mind because they were that good. I mean, what make the stuff up if it if it wasn't good? I mentioned these episodes; they were my favorite ones. Uh, so, let me review of the of the show, The Facts of Life. Please click on the video. Please read it. Please subscribe to my channel and please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. You can check out all my videos not only on my YouTube channel. At valuec.com, it's all WDY, and NFC.com, it's the homepage of the value reviewer, Christine Moore. You can check out all of his content, not only uh, his TV trash videos, but all of his content on his, on his uh, website. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.